Hey guys, welcome back to High Yield Intraday Trading. I hope everyone of you is doing good. So before we start discussing today's topic, let me request you all to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button here. Once you click on it, you will get the confirmation on the left bottom corner. Post you subscribe to my channel. Also make sure to press the bell icon and click on all. You will get the confirmation on the left bottom corner so that whenever I upload a video, you get the notification about the same without any messes. Also, I would to request you all to subscribe to my telegram channel with the name HYIT intraday calls because I share a lot of things over there and it might be helpful to you in some way or the other all right so before we start with today's discussion please allow me to mention about an offer that will reduce your capital requirements for trading various segments like the NSC futures and the MCX futures Okay, talking about the NSE features, you can trade contracts like Nifty, Bank Nifty, SGX Nifty, etc. with just 6,000 rupees for one lot. Whereas in MCX, you can trade one lot of crude oil, copper, natural gas, etc. for just 4,000 to 6,000 rupees. Okay, for gold and silver, it will cost you around 10,000 rupees per lot. And not only this, you will be happily surprised when you get to know the other features that are being offered. I can't give you all the details here as there are many, but I will surely share all the details post you get in touch with me. In today's scenario, if you want to trade one lot of crude oil, you need to have a minimum of 1.6 lakhs as your capital. That is 1 lakh 60,000. Similarly, for Nifty, for just one lot, you need to have at least 1 lakh as your capital. Now replace 1.6 lakhs with 4,000 to 6,000 rupees and 1 lakh with 6,000 rupees. It does make a lot of difference to a retail trader like you and me, right? So that's the help I want to extend or offer. And if you are interested, then you can get in touch with me on the details that are being shown on the screen and we can take it forward. All right, so one of the most important factor that should be taken care when you are into any kind of trading is when and where exactly should you enter or initiate the trade. Now, this is the point where most of the traders fail as a result of which the stop loss gets hit or they come out of the trade with less profits or the panic factor creeps in. And so many other things do happen when the entry itself is wrong. Yeah, so in this video, I will be covering this very aspect and will be explaining the stuffs taking the help of one of the indicators called as pivot points. Okay, now please note that I will not be able to cover and explain the technicals for every indicator because the technicals differ for every trader. Every trader uses different indicators and oscillators to make up the trading decisions right so it will not be possible on my part to go ahead and explain the entry part for every indicator individually okay for some pivots might be very important for some traders the emas might be more important whereas for some other trader the bollinger bands might be more important right so it would be really tough for me to explain the entry scenarios for all the technicals but please be mindful that if you are using a particular indicator or oscillator then you need to know every single bit about it because that's the thing, depending on which you are trying to prove yourself right against all the odds. Okay. And also, please be mindful that uh, before some time I did mention that indicators and oscillators. I mentioned both indicators and oscillators. But in real time, 80 to 85% of the time, we do not make use of the oscillators to make these decisions. Okay, 80 to 85 percent of the time, we take the help of the indicators to make the decisions, our entry decisions, our stop loss, where to put the stop loss, where to exit the trade and all those stuffs, right? Most of the time, we use the indicators, right? So in this video also, that is the very reason why I will be making the use of an indicator as an example. And as I said, that particular indicator will be pivot points. Okay, so, so having that said, said, let's move on to the charts and let's bring up the pivots okay just a moment 
Right, so this is the nifty spot chart and the time frame that I'm using is the 15 minutes as you can see on the left top corner here and uh, this is the nifty spot chart, okay? Now the horizontal lines that you see here are the pivot points. Okay, now this, the platform that I'm showing you right now, that is trading view. And in order to plot the pivot points, you can go to indicators, go to technicals and search for pivot points, click on it and that will get, uh, that will get embedded or that will get plotted on the chart. Okay, now what do we see? Let, let's talk about this day, 17th of October, 2022. Okay, now first thing first, why do we use the pivot points? Okay, what are this uh, P, what are these R1, R2, S1, S2, S3 and all the stuffs? I'm very sure you are you know about it, but just to uh, make sure that uh, if there is a new guy who is watching this video, a guy who is new to trading, uh, just to make sure that he knows these stuffs, I'll just quickly cover it up, okay? So pivot, the P that you see here stands for pivot, okay? That is the pivot line and above the pivot line, normally we will have R1, R2, R3 and below the pivot line, we will have S1, S2, S3 where R stands for resistance. So this is resistance 1, resistance 2 and resistance 3 and S stands for support. So this is support 1, support 2 and support 3. Now, do we have only R1, R2, R3 and S1, S2, S3? No, we can have more. We can have R4, R5, R6 as well. Similarly, we can have S4, S5 and S6 as well. But the best practice, according to me, is to follow only till R3 and S3. That should be more than sufficient for any trader to take up a trade, to make the trading decisions. Okay, I hope that is clear. Now, what is when we when we talk about these r's what is it as i said it is resistance so what is expected the expectation is whenever the prices reach till this particular r1 it should face a resistance and it should come down the price similarly let me just a moment let me bring in a pencil here okay so similarly if a stock is going up like this Whenever it reaches R2, it is expected to face a resistance here at this line and fall. Okay, this is a theoretical, ex uh, uh, this is the theoretical expectation. Okay, so basically R stands for resistance. Similarly, if we talk about support, let's take the example of S2. So what is expected here? It is expected that whenever a stock is falling, and the prices reach near to S2 or at S2, the price is expected to get a support and it should move up from here like this. I'm, I'm sorry for these, ki these kind of uh, lines. I know they are not aligned, uh, but please do excuse me for that, okay? So this is the theory behind these pivot lines. Okay, this is the exact theory that is behind the pivot lines and this is exactly what you need to know. There is nothing more that you should be knowing. Okay, so if a stock is going up, okay, and when it reaches this pivot, that is R2, the stock is expected to come down by facing a resistance there, like this. Okay, and if you talk about the support, whenever a stock is going down like this, and when it reaches this particular support level, it is expected that the prices should take a support and start moving up from here like this. As simple as that. Okay, this is what is the theoretical part about pivot. Okay, now coming to the practical explanation. So what, what do you see on 17th of October? What exactly do you see here? Well, the day started and we got a red candle right the first 15 minutes candle was a red candle and then we got a couple of green candles now where do we take up a trade do we take up a trade here just a moment do we take up a trade at this point at this candle once the candle closes can we go ahead and initiate a buy trade from here it would be a beautiful trade right because it just went up so the question is, is, will it be a right trade? Well, according to me, it's a no. Why is it a no? Because it is too early to take up a trade. 
Why is it too early? Because we are trying to take up a trade at the 9.30 candle. The market, the equity cash market at least takes 30 to 45 minutes to settle down. Okay, so always make sure to initiate a trade only after 9.45 or maybe 10 a.m. Make it a rule. Okay, now in this case, it is a very, it is a perfect trade. Now, if we talk about this trade, now you see that there is a pivot here, right? There's a pivot line here. There's a pivot line here. And the, uh, the first candle was a red candle. And the second candle was actually a green candle and it closed above this particular support level, right? So under uh, the best case scenarios, you should actually initiate a buy trade once this candlestick closes. Once this candlestick closes, you should initiate a buy trade. And then you can see how beautifully it moved up. And you can book a profit somewhere here before the next resistance. Right, because this pivot line will work as a resistance right so since you have taken an entry here it would be a good idea to book your profit just before or just below the next resistance so it would have been a beautiful trade but is this the scenario is this how the market reacts all the time the simple answer is no and everybody knows it i don't have to prove it anyways okay so give it some time guys if you are into intraday trading into equity cash trading it might be futures as well if you are referring the chart make sure to give it some time do not trade before 9 45 or 10 a.m in the morning okay that was point number one so we are not taking any trade at this point at this entire level we are not taking any trade okay so from s1 till the pivot line we do not have any opportunity to take up the trade because it has been giving all green candles so it did not retrace at all okay so we are not taking any trade from s1 till the pivot point the pivot line okay now what happened next let me just make it a bit bigger okay now what happened next next we have to wait for if now now by this time we know that the bulls are in control right the trend of the market for that particular day is bullish so we will go with the flow right we will go with the direction wherever the market is going it is always the best idea or a good idea to trade in that direction if the market is going up always try to take long trades if the market is going down always try to take short trades that will be more easier okay now so as since you want to since you have already seen that the market is bullish and you should be taking up a buy trade so what will be your next uh, thing as a trader you need to wait for the next resistance to be breached what is the next resistance the next resistance is this pivot line so you have to wait for the candlestick to close above this resistance post which you can initiate a buy trade okay now coming back to the scenario what is happening here this is the 10 30 candle which actually closed above the resistance it closed somewhere here right the high was here but the close was here right so should you initiate a buy trade after this candlestick closes i mean all the prerequisites are being met right the resistance has been broken you have got a green candle which has breached the resistance and closed above it so go ahead and initiate a buy trade what do you think about it what is the answer well my answer is a no the very reason being if you are into day trading or if you are into any kind of trading you have to always give a space you have to always give some space for the stock to move now if you are taking a buy entry at this point are you giving enough space for the stock to move up because the next resistance is right here and we are talking about a 7000 rupee stock i mean it is in dice but just for explanation okay we are talking about a 17000 rupees script 
So do you think that this space is good enough for you to enter the trade, to wait for it to move up further and to book your profit somewhere here? Well, I don't think so. So what should you do? What is the best practice? The best practice is always make sure if you are using pivot lines, always make sure that if a candlestick is breaching this particular support level, sorry, resistance level and is closing above halfway between this particular resistance level and the next resistance level. Okay, do not trade that particular thing. Okay, if the stock price is closing above the midway between this resistance and the next resistance, avoid that trade. If a candlestick, let's say for example, if this candlestick would be going like this, and it reached the midway, and again it started moving down, and again it started moving up, then I would say that it would be a good idea to take a buy position after the closure of this candle. But in this case, what is happening is, this green candle has already surpassed half the way between this resistance and the next resistance. So we actually do not have enough space to go ahead and initiate a trade, wait for the trade to go in our direction and then book our profits. Even if you do it, most of the time you will find yourself stuck or the profits that you will get will be much lesser. So don't do it. I hope you are getting the point. Okay. So always make sure that whenever a particular stock breaches a particular resistance, the first thing that you need to do is see where the next resistance level is. So here, in this case, this is the next resistance level. Okay. And then just by seeing, you don't have to mark it manually or anything like that, right? So just by seeing, what do you think is the midpoint between this point and this point? Obviously somewhere here, right? So make sure that the candlestick should not surpass or should not exceed the midway between these two points and close above it. If it is closing above it, avoid that trade. If you get a candlestick which is not closing above it, which is closing below this mid uh, midway, then you can initiate the trade after that particular candlestick closes. Okay, so I hope I'm clear here. This is how you use the pivots. Okay, so you don't take up a trade here after the closure of this candle because it has already surpassed the midpoint between both the resistances. What you need to do now is you need to wait for a retracement. Let it retrace down. Okay, so it retraced down. This red candle itself was a retracement. Now, the next question might be that, uh, can a retracement happen with just one candle? Of course, it can happen. And uh, I believe I have also made a video on that. Retracement always does not mean that we have to get a couple of candles. Okay, retracement can also happen with a single candle also. Okay, so in this scenario, this candle, red candle is the retracement candle. Okay, so you don't take up a trade at this green candle right? You wait for the next candle. You clearly see that next candle is a red candle, but it closes above the resistance. So you have to wait for the next candle again. Now, next candle is a green candle, which is also taking a support at this particular resistance level and is closing below the midpoint between these two resistance points, right? If this is the midpoint, this candle, this green candle that you see here, this one, that is closing below the midpoint. So what does it mean? It means that now this candle's closure will be the right time to enter or to initiate a buy trade. Okay, so wait for this green candle to close and immediately at the opening of the next candle, that is this red candle, you initiate a buy trade. Okay, so you initiate a buy trade at any price in this particular candle. Okay, let me go to the cursor. So you can initiate the trade at any price point at the 11.15 candle. Okay. Put a stop loss 
at the recent swing low so what is the recent swing low in this case this one right just below the recent swing low put the stop loss your target will be either at the next resistance exactly at the next resistance or below the next resistance to be on the safer side i always prefer booking my pro profits just below the next resistance because you never know whether it will touch the resistance or not in this case it has right it has even breached the resistance and moved up further but who knows right at this point of time at this green candle we we never know that what will happen in the future right so always book your profits if you are in a long trade always book your profits just below the next resistance similarly if you are in a short trade always book your profits just above the next support level okay so i hope this is clear okay now uh, now there are various scenarios now if you if we talk about this day okay that is uh, 14th of october 2022 now we don't have any r4 here right r3 is the last thing that i uh, asked you to use right r3 is the last thing now we don't have any r4 so what do we do in such scenarios now what will you do now the market opened up and it was sideways for a while so right now what is the thing that you need to check as a trader the thing that you need to check as a trader is the support level because it is above the support level this entire for this entire time right for this entire time the prices were above the resistance level so what will be a good time to enter the good time to enter will be the time when you see that the price is taking a support at the support level and it is moving up so in this scenario what will you do this candle is the one which clearly tells you that it is facing uh, sorry it is getting a support at r3 and it should move up so will you enter the trade after this candle uh, ends the answer is no because this is just the first confirmation okay this is just the first confirmation that the prices are getting a support at r3 but you need a stronger confirmation so that stronger confirmation is this green candle okay so you make the entry only after this green candle closes so your entry will be somewhere here post the closure of this green candle put your stop loss below just a moment let me delete this yep so your entry will be after the closure of this candle this one put your stop loss below the support level that is this swing low it is right the recent swing low put the stop loss just below the recent swing low and your target the first target can be here because that is the swing high and the day is high as well and as you can see the profit that you are making is also decent enough so always i normally aim like this okay either i will book it at the day's high or just below the day's high as i told to be on the safer side i will not wait for this green candle and all okay even this green candle when this green candle will be under formation i will book my profits because who knows what will happen next you you cannot guarantee that after this green candle the uh, prices will keep going up like this nobody can guarantee that right and in this case as you can see here it started falling after that so in my case it was a good decision to enter at this level and to exit at this level i should be doing a stress free trading okay so this is how it works guys i mean this is how you make use of pivot points like this we just discussed two scenarios here right like this there are hundreds of scenarios so as and when you start trading real time the more you use the pivot points the more you see how the pivot points are acting as resistances are acting as supports the more you will learn okay don't go for theoretical knowledge okay i do not support paper trading trading for that very reason what will you do with paper trading nothing you will not get anything at all i mean uh, no offense to the guys who uh, who practice on paper trading but this is my perspective about paper trading you won't feel that kick okay you won't feel uh, that uh, 
hormone imbalance when you are in losses if you are into pivot trading right so trade life trade real and how to trade real if you are somebody who is practicing trade with just one share or trade with just five shares that will not hurt you no matter how uh, like uh, if you are expecting the stock to be going up and if it starts falling it will not hurt you uh, with uh, if you are trading with just five shares similarly if you are expecting a stock to be falling and if it starts moving up it will seriously not hurt you if you are trading with just one share or five shares so if you are a guy who is practicing trading then make sure that you always trade real time but with very less number of shares okay so i think it's enough <laughs> enough for today and uh, yeah so this is what i wanted to just a moment let me bring back the cursor right so uh, yeah so this is what i wanted to explain to you guys and this was specifically related to pivot points okay so i hope now you know how exactly to use the pivot points and if you follow whatever has been told rightly okay if you follow it rightly whatever i have told in this video then i am very sure that you will be able to make a good amount of money trading intraday okay and let me also mention the fact that since i have explained about pivot points that does not mean that you will pick any stock and start trading on it as per the way i have explained it here no that would not work so you need to apply these things on the right scripts okay on the right stocks so this is where your stock selection process comes into picture so make sure that you select the right stocks first and then apply the things that has been told in this video and then you can see things to be working on behalf surely okay so that's it from mine guys and for the guys who have not watched my previous video i have put in the video card on the top right corner of the video the i symbol that you see there you can click on it and watch my previous video and as always we request you all to like and subscribe to my youtube channel and also please do not the ending of uh, do not miss the ending of this video as you will get some more information about hyit that might be helpful to you in some way or the other and please feel free to ask your questions or queries if any in the comment section and i will surely reply back to them and also please do not forget to like this video if you liked it okay so that's all from my end and i will see you all later hope you all will stick back happy trading and take care of yourselves bye bye